We are talking about family, and we have moved past uh, couples, husbands and wives. Uh, we started on parents' responsibilities to their children. Um, the first two areas that we looked at, uh, the first one is teaching, training, instruction. The second one being discipline, and, and those two tend to go together. Um, we also looked at uh, how God disciplines us, and, and the image in Hebrews that, that is given is as a father disciplines his son. And it's not pleasant at the time, but it brings about a great reward. Okay. Um, we see that without discipline, there is no love. Now, uh, what is the measure of discipline? Um, I think that depends on the parent and on the child. Because we had some children that you could raise your eyebrow at and they just melt and cry and, and be broken. None of them are here. <laughs> We also have children that will look you in the eye and you say don't and do it. I didn't spoil that child. I did not spare the rod. And that was about a 15 minute of hellacious stubbornness that my wife had to remove herself from the room because it was a contest of wills. Um, you know, just to fill you in on the, the background of that a little bit, we had a stone hearth in the fireplace, and the kids were not allowed to play on the hearth because it was flagstone, it had jagged edges, and, and it was hard, and uh, we wanted to have the fire. I didn't want them going near there. And, and uh, one of our, our sons that is not Christopher Donovan or Thaddeus, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he decided that was a, a rule he wanted to test. And so he, I don't think he was even walking yet, he was crawling. And he pulled himself up on the, the hearth and then he turned and looked at you. <laughs> oh yeah, bring it, Dad. So I told him no. Picked him up, moved him back where he was supposed to be. He threw a little fit, and then he crawled right back over there, pulled himself up, and looked at me. <laughs> and so no, it didn't work the first time, it's not gonna work the second. And so I picked him up, gave him a swat, told him no, sat him down. He cried a little bit longer, crawled over, stood up, and looked at me. Um, this, this went on for about 15 minutes and didn't get angry that's a part of the trick of disciplining is you can't discipline out of anger okay punishment uh, for its own sake is, is abuse you, you can't just punish because you're mad okay. so Christy actually got up and left the room um, thanks for having my back babe um, <laughs> And, and we finally resolved it. Uh, he finally said, oh, you're serious about this. You don't want me on, okay. Boy, we should have negotiated earlier. Um, so we, we have strong-willed children. And sometimes the measure of discipline for children had to be different because what worked with one did not work with others, okay? And sometimes at certain stages of their life, what worked earlier didn't work later, okay? Um, so, I think you need to prayerfully consider how to discipline. Um, and we need to remember that, that the established example for this is our Heavenly Father with us. Okay? So, we talked about training, we've talked about discipline. Now we're going to move on. There were two other areas that I found in Scripture that talk about responsibilities of parents to
to their children. Okay? So, teaching, discipline, provision to be a provider. Um, I'm just going to read through these real quick. You don't have to turn there. Um, you can turn there if you don't trust me. That's fine. Um, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. Paul is writing to Timothy. He's talking about how as a pastor he should uh, pastor the church. He was talking about how the church should run. As he's drawing his uh, letter to a conclusion, he's talking about how Christians should work in the church. And he says, but if anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for members of his household, he has denied the faith. Now, if, if we stop there, that's, that's pretty heavy. But he didn't stop there. He says, and is worse than an unbeliever. Ouch. Um, ouch. We take care of the members of our household. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes we can take care of them with more generosity and sometimes with less, depending where we're at. There's a season for everything. Okay? Um, so you, you won't be able to provide for them in the same measure all the time. Sometimes it'll be more, sometimes it'll be less. Uh, I've told you about the time uh, when Christy and I were, were early in our marriage and in our uh, ministry, and things were tight. They were tight enough that she actually made toast with the crusts for the kids for breakfast. And after she had made breakfast, she came and she told me, that's it, we have nothing left. And that, that's not like, we just don't have stuff we don't want. It meant like you open the cupboard, there was nothing there, okay? And so we prayed, and right about lunchtime, uh, one of the guys from the youth center that we worked at comes up to the door, knocks on the door. We <coughs> open the door, he's got a, a case of uh, ramen noodles. He said, yeah, my mom's babysitting down the road, and we had these extra, and she said, you guys might like them, so she asked me to bring them over to you. What a coincidence. <laughs> okay. um, our provision at that time was toast on the crusts and ramen noodles. Okay. So to be a provider, uh, and again, you, you have to look at the opposite side of this. Uh, if you are not providing, especially for the members of your household, you have denied the faith, and you are worse than an unbeliever. Uh, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous. How many of you ever thought about the fact that uh, you should leave an inheritance for your grandchildren? I didn't. Not until I saw this. <coughs> this, this is part of, we, we talked about in our series on finances and on money, we talked about how um, we need to be wise stewards, good stewards. We need to be looking to the future. We need to be preparing for things. Um, this is one of those things that I think we're supposed to be looking at, is to put ourselves in a place where when God takes us home, we leave an inheritance for our kids and our grandkids, okay? Um, and just so you know, Benj and Shay, the portions are getting smaller and smaller with more and more children, <laughs> just so you know. Um, Second Corinthians chapter 12, Verse 14, here for the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be a burden, for I do not seek what is yours but you. For children are not obligated to save up for their parents, but parents for their children. Okay? 
this, this is an issue that we have to take seriously as parents. Scripture tells us that children are a blessing. Okay? Children are a blessing. They are a gift from the Almighty God. They are put into our care for a time. Okay? Because they're not ours, they're His. One of the most difficult things that I've had to learn as a father is that my kids are God's kids first. That they're His first. And while they were in my home, that didn't really cause me a problem. But then when they moved out of my home, and they, they started doing things on their own, I had to realize, I've got to step back. I've got to trust God to take care of my kids. To do those things um, that he's already done for me. Okay? We have a responsibility, according to Scripture, to be providers for our families. Okay? Now, in these passages, um, you'll notice that uh, they use the, the pronoun he. Uh, this is for, for both parents. Now, I'm not saying that moms should be working outside of the home. I don't know how God's organized your family. I know for us, there were periods of time where Christy worked outside the home. There were periods of time where she worked inside the home. There were periods of time when that seemed like all we ever did was work. I think there's different seasons, and I think that God has a different area for each of us, so long as the provision is there without sin. Okay? I want to qualify that. Okay? Because... Your provision for your children should not come at the expense of breaking the law or being immoral or unethical. Okay? So as parents, we have a duty and a responsibility to be providing for our children and our grandchildren. Okay? Now, uh, I, I want to reiterate this again. <clears throat> there, there's two things. One... For whatever reason, when you start talking to people about their children, they get tense. Okay. You can talk to them um, about their job. You can talk to them about what's going on at church. You can talk to them even in, in some cases about their spouse. But when you start talking to them about their children, they get their backs up. Okay. Any mama bears in here? <laughs> yeah, I only saw one hand go up. So, yeah. Um, so, for whatever reason, this is a tender area, and and I want you to hear what God's word is saying. When I when I wrote this series out, I intentionally did not go to uh, other people's books. Uh, I didn't look at focus on the family. I didn't look at family life matters. I didn't, I, none of that is in my notes because I wanted it to rest on God's words alone. Now, not to say that those books are bad by any means. Uh, one of the books that was given to Christian and I at the uh, outset of our marriage was Dr. Dobson's book, Parenting Isn't for Cowards. And that helped us to establish some guidelines for when we had children. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying they're bad by any means. I'm, I'm sure there are good ones and there are bad ones. Um, what I am saying is I want our position to rest on the word of God. Okay. So, the second thing that I want to say is um, Christy and I do not share this from a position of having accomplished or attained this. We're still learning. We're still learning. Um, you know, they, they always say that parents should apologize to their firstborn because that's where you make most of your mistakes. I don't believe it. We did perfect with Christopher. <laughs> no, that's not true. Christopher was our exper experimental child. 
And then we had Donovan, who was and is nothing like Christian. Huh. All right, well, we've got the loud, aggressive one, and we've got the kind of shy and, and reserved one. There's nothing left. Oh. <laughs> Did Benjamin prove us wrong? <laughs> he was his own unique person. And he gave us experiences and challenges that were unlike either of his siblings. Okay, well, you know, it took us a couple years. Well, okay, we got this. And then God blessed us with Mackenzie. Girls are not like boys. <laughs> at all. At all. <laughs> we had uh, determined that we were not going to make her a girly girl. We were going to let her decide. And she was not very old. Uh, and she came walking out of the bedroom. And she would taken one of the guy's G.I. Joes. And she wrapped it in a... a, a a rag, a, uh, what do you call it? Washcloth. She, she walked, wrapped it in a washcloth and she was carrying it like a baby. Okay. I went, wow, okay. Obviously, she's, she's going to want babies. Now, to balance that, she was also sitting at the table at one point and she had a male and a female and they were talking. And I don't know where she got this, but we're watching her and they're talking, oh, isn't that so cute? And then she looks and she goes, no, 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 we, we don't come from this point that we've achieved at all. And, and now, you know, then God blessed us with Thaddeus. And Thaddeus has similarities with each of his siblings, but they're, they're combined in its own unique way. There are commonalities. Um, you, you can pretty much talk to any band note boy, actually any band note child, and within a little bit of time figure out that they're related. Um, there's a commonality there. But each one is unique in their own way. Um, so when, when I'm speaking about children, I'm revealing our mistakes as well in light of Scripture. Okay? I'm not pointing the finger at you except that three are pointing back at me. Okay? So, um, provision. Then the, the fourth area, we've got uh, teaching, training. We've got discipline. We've got provision. And then we've got this category of don't do this, okay? This is what not to do, okay? Uh, ironically, uh, when we studied the book of Colossians, uh, I pointed out that Colossians and Ephesians were written at the same time, and um, Colossians kind of was the, the, the Cliff's Notes of Ephesians. Uh, kind of similar to Romans and Galatians. Um, so we see in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. Now, Paul has just talked about, he's talking about family relationships. He's talking about the husband and the wife. Uh, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4, he says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Now, if you, you look at this, the one thing that jumped out at me first was that two of the areas that we've already covered are listed here. Training, instruction, or discipline and instruction. Okay? The first part, though, is, is where we, we kind of have a little bit of an issue. It says... Um, do not provoke your children to anger. Colossians 3.21 is the echo of this. It says, fathers, do not provoke your children. And then he says, lest they become discouraged. Um, I, 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 this is a, a hard one to pin down. It's a hard one to set parameters for. Because... As each of my children are different within the group, my children are different than your children. And each of your children is probably different from each other. Okay? Um, I don't know where the threshold would be 
I don't know where the threshold is sometimes for my kids. There's no way I'm going to guess at your kids. Okay? But there is a threshold where you've just gotten to the point where you've just frustrated them. Okay? Now, please note, um, he didn't say you're teenagers because he's smarter than that. Because your breathing will irritate your teenage children. Your presence in the room can irritate your teenage children. Okay? Set and establish a, a bar, a precedent. When you see your kids getting angry, when you see them getting frustrated, it's time for a talk. Sit down. Uh, have open lines of communication with them. One of the things that we do with our kids, we have a 12-year-old talk. And that includes the birds and the bees. Okay. Um, it also includes, while it may not seem like it in the moment, we will always be here for you. And you can at any moment come and talk to us. Okay. And we want to be the number one person that you would look to. I don't want my kids going to their friend's dad or to somebody else. I want them to come to me. Okay. And interestingly enough, a lot of their friends ended up coming to us. God, God has increased our family far beyond the biology. So um, be aware to not frustrate your children. Uh, last thing that I'm, I'm just going to lay here, um, and then we'll, we'll uh, close. This is one passage that, that doesn't really fit in any of the categories except what not to do. Okay? And Jesus is, is speaking in Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. He says, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Okay? So one of the things that we can't do, and, and I speak from experience because I, I did this, is we cannot make idols out of our children. We can't let them replace in our hearts. We can't let them have the throne of our heart. That's, that's for God and God alone. Okay? Now, when you do this, when you make that your priority and you establish that, the other things work better. Okay? They will work better because the hierarchy is there. The, the natural order is there. Okay? So, just want to close with this. Uh, parents' responsibilities to their children. Teach them and train them. Discipline them. Even as our Heavenly Father disciplines us. Provide for them. And then don't do those things that exasperate and frustrate your children. That put them at the point of uh, becoming discouraged. And then to wrap all of that up, we've got to love Jesus more than men. We love because he first loved us. You want to really learn how to love your children, learn how to love Christ. And he will show you how to love his children. Okay?